Whew. That was cracky. That was very entertaining. It was the struggle to find the end. That was a good end game practice game. I just want to see how, <laughs> if it was really quite bad, but we got lucky. Let's have a look at the development. Excuse me. So we went on the kind of principle of the home alone king type thing with the position, especially with the pin through from the bishop to the queen and the smaller piece attacking the higher piece and I think that may have given us a slight advantage and we wanted to try and keep the advantage but I just want to see so we got the knight with the pawn so that gave us a piece excuse me a piece advantage but positionally now we've got the king home alone and we're trying to work our pieces towards the opponent's king. It's not easy. The opponent was doing things to block things off, so it was really quite tricky getting in there. So we're attacking this um, pawn that's got no protection on. The king comes to protect it, and we're bringing the knight up. I'm just looking for any dips in the evaluation to see if there's something we need to work on, because I don't think it was the best, but maybe the opponent gave us these positions so then they brought the pawn down it's stopping the knight from jumping to here because that's where we want it to go so that was a good spot so now we're trying to just dishevel the pawn structures around the king and then the rook comes into play which is fine because we can move the king here for safety at some point uh, to get the rooks involved so we took the queen off the board it's not showing a massive dip at all it was minus seven that's minus seven and then it doesn't like the pawn capture what's it saying king h8 yeah move the king first i suppose but you know at the same token i didn't want him just mind you he couldn't move could he because we've got the x-ray through with the bishop so we did have time to move ah that was the reason why i took the pawn because i thought well there's no point in bringing my king here, he's just going to get a free ball, but he couldn't actually move. Ah, That's the same thing we were just talking about in that last game of that tunnel vision. Maybe take a look at the second move. We had four minutes there, so we could have actually looked to see that he couldn't move, and we could have just moved the king to safety, because I think we lost a bit of tempo there. So then the, the rook comes across, but I wasn't going to lose too much sleep over it because at the end of the day, our rooks can come and face it off and it has jumped up to minus, minus eight. So that's quite good. So then the move, king moves back and now we're starting this attack off the king area. I was looking to trade off the rooks, but I thought the knight looks a lot better in this position. Was potentially looking to come here, but I think I got kind of carried away with bringing the rook here, looking for the exchange through. Didn't drop at all, really. In fact, it's gone up for us. Okay, so I won't beat myself up over that. It did feel quite nice, the knight being there. And then we captured the pawn, putting a check on the king. It did drop. All right, okay, so we brought the knight back because at this moment in time, we're looking for the exchanges, but wanting to get the rook involved. This key square here, I was really looking to get the bishop here, putting a check on but that was circumvented so we captured the pawn and then they captured so still feeling quite good but there was no meat on the bones really in terms of being able to get a checkmate type position here so this was really interesting trying to drive this forward there must be a massive dip somewhere so we captured the bishop king takes and now we want to try and link up the knights keep them together as best possible get a bit of a check on the king here and now they're nicely linked together and holding court around this area here so they're managing some key squares especially around here looking to try and suffocate the king somehow so we'll bring the rook up and I'm trying to think about trying to get this bishop off the board maybe that's a bit overworking the rook really I bet you there was a better move somewhere else so it minus nine and then when we did the rook move maybe it should have been something else 
Rook takes c3. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I wasn't even spotting that. I was so focused on either trying to get the bishop off the board. There again, you see, these small things. Didn't really want to come here. I don't know why, because I thought, well, maybe his rook's going to come here and own the file. But realistically, it's not going to be too much trouble. I probably would have seen this pawn after I'd done this one. But I didn't, I didn't have sights of this pawn at all. So really need to open up that tunnel vision a little bit more. Okay, so we're down again. Then I think the opponent's thinking we're going for a draw. And I'm like thinking, well, no, maybe I can go back up and then start facing his king off. I saw somewhere potentially he's going to get trapped, but then I think I messed it up a little bit. <clears throat> so it's gone minus 12. <coughs> so, excuse me. So that's a good position. Then the rook comes out. So it's like, um, I don't think I saw this one. Knight f5. Yeah, I didn't see that. Knight coming here, that would have finished it off. Yeah, I went a bit fancy. I was thinking, OK, well, if his king moves out of the way, maybe we can get his bishop off the board or something or the other. But it obviously he didn't just push the pawn down, so we brought the knight up to the key square, which would have got us the checkmate, the move before. <laughs> Dear me. Right, got to spot these things a little bit quicker. It's not about moving quicker, it's about getting rid of that tunnel vision and really finding the appropriate moves. Okay, so the knight's king's moving further down. I'm thinking he's going to escape, but I'm not having any of that. Now I do see a pattern. And he does capture, so then we go for the checkmate. So it's a little bit late, but it, it felt really nice trying to grab the checkmate. It really is annoying when the king does escape, and then you lose pieces left, right and centre in these types of endings. So I'm feeling quite celebratory that we eventually got a type of ending checkmate in this sort of scenario. Got to remember the tunnel vision, make it a triple or a double tunnel vision this time. Got to expand my tunnel vision. 